I recently took my very first cruise on MSC. This was a three night sailing out of Miami on the Divina. And there were some things I really liked and there were some things I really didn't. So if you would like the details, please keep watching. Hello everyone and welcome back to Freshly Squeezed Travels. I hope you are having a splendid day. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Kim and I am glad you stopped by. Right before I started filming, I was like, oh, I forgot to put on perfume. So I ran to put on perfume to film a video. So even though you can't smell me, it was evidently very important that I smelled good for you today. So this was a last minute sailing and we got a really, really good rate. So I was really excited to go on this cruise. I think this might even be my first three night cruise. And I was super, super excited to see what MSC was all about. I've seen lots of reviews on YouTube and lots of videos, and I've heard some really nice things about MSC and I've heard some not so great things. So I'm gonna go through the highlights and the lowlights of my sailing. My next Next video will be a full review of this sailing. I'll tell you what I thought of the ship, of the food, of the staff, and everything else. But this I'm just going to really talk about what I really liked and what I really didn't. And I think I'm going to call it hits and hiccups. Now, I don't like to start my videos on a negative note, but unfortunately our sailing started on a negative note. We were given an arrival time of 3.30 p.m. by MSC and we arrived right on time. But what we didn't know is that an hour before that, someone had pulled the fire alarm. Now, I don't know exactly what happened because we weren't there, but what we were told is that someone decided it would be fun to pull the fire alarm. So they had to evacuate the terminal and by the time we got there, the line was two hours long. Now keep in mind that the ship was only half full. They had 2,100 passengers on this sailing and the Divina can hold about 4,700 passengers. So we were quite surprised when we got there and we saw the huge line. The line moved very slowly and I felt really, really bad for the people that had children and toddlers and babies with them. And by the way, there were a lot of children on this sailing. Now this obviously wasn't MSC's fault. It wasn't their fault that some idiot pulled the fire alarm. I probably shouldn't call them an idiot. I don't know exactly what happened, but it was not their fault that someone pulled the fire alarm. But when we got on board, there was no one around to welcome us. They had checked our key cards um, earlier on before we actually boarded the ship. So when we got on the ship, there was absolutely no one there to greet us. We wandered in and immediately I realized that the crew members were wearing life jackets. So I assumed that muster was happening. I went to the nearest crew member who was behind the bar and I walked up and he came right over and said, I'm sorry, all the bars are closed. And I said, okay, no problem. I said, we just got on board. Is muster happening right now? And he said, yes, it is. And I said, should we go to our muster station? And he said, yes. So we started to try to find our muster station when another crew member who saw our key card said, sorry, you've already missed muster. It's going on now. So you're going to have to do it tomorrow. We asked, okay, when and where? And they said that they they didn't know but that we would be notified later. Now MSC does muster the way most cruise lines do it now where they show a video in your stateroom but apparently they only show the video at certain times and since we missed it we were going to have to do muster the following day. There are a couple problems with this. First, we were crossing the ocean from Miami to Nassau, so what if there was an emergency that night? Fortunately, we had all cruised before, so we really knew the drill, so that really wasn't a big issue. But the next day, we were still not told where and when to go to muster. The next morning, uh, my friend Terry was down getting coffee when she heard that muster was happening in five minutes. So she frantically called my stateroom. I answered, I was still in my pajamas, I think it was about 9 a.m. And she said, Kim, you need to get down here now, they're doing muster. So I raced down there and we did muster in one of the auditoriums. It just really would have been nice to have had some communication about when this makeup muster drill was happening. But well, we got down there, we got it done, and it really wasn't that big of a hiccup, but it definitely was a hiccup. 
Now let's talk about one of the hits. So let's go back to when we first boarded the ship. After we were asking all about muster and they told us that it was already happening, we headed to our cabins. And when we got to our cabins, there were chilled bottles of Prosecco waiting for us. Now I'm not sure if they put Prosecco in our rooms because our cruise fare included all of our drinks or if all passengers get a complimentary bottle of chilled Prosecco. But after our two hour wait in line, that was a really nice surprise and we immediately sat down and had a glass of bubbly. Now the next hiccup is MSC's mask policy because I'm not sure what their mask policy is. No one on this sailing was wearing masks. We had to wear it at the port when we were embarking and when we got off the ship. But other than that, I believe we were not required to wear masks and no one wore masks on this sailing. By the way, every eligible passenger had to be fully vaccinated to go on this cruise and we also did have to provide a negative COVID test. But the hiccup was that every once in a while, very, very randomly, a crew member would say, do you have a mask and hand you a mask as if you were supposed to wear it when you would look around and there's absolutely no one else wearing a mask. My friend Terry, who called me to tell me about muster happening, when she walked into the auditorium, she was asked if she had a mask. She said no and they just waved her in. When I arrived a few minutes later, no one asked if I had a mask. Another time I was getting coffee right before disembarkation. So this is the last day of our cruise. And I I had visited the buffet every day. I go in to get coffee and there is a crew member there who says, do you have a mask? And I said, no. And they handed me a mask so I could go in and get my coffee. And again, I had visited the buffet every single day before that and no one had ever asked me to wear a mask. So this inconsistency, it was just a minor nuisance, but it was a little odd and it was a hiccup in our trip. The next thing that I loved on the sailing is that almost every bar on the Divina has professional restaurant grade espresso machines and espresso drinks were included with your cruise fare whether or not you had the drink package. It was so nice to start the day with a cappuccino or a latte or espresso and the coffee was absolutely delicious. And here's a little tip for you. Don't get the brewed coffee in the buffet. Go to one of the bars that has an espresso machine. There's actually a bar with an espresso machine in the buffet and make sure you get your coffee there. The espresso drinks were a huge hit on this cruise. The next hiccup is the thermal suite. The thermal suite on the MSC Divina was the least impressive one that I have ever experienced. I have gone to thermal suites on many different cruise lines on many different ships and enjoyed the salt room, the mud room, the sauna, steam rooms, jacuzzis. And the MSC Divina was just a little bit lacking. It only had steam rooms and saunas and that was it. They also had regular lounge chairs that you could lie in and watch the ocean. They didn't have the heated stone beds. They didn't have jacuzzis. They didn't have any of the other bells and whistles that most of the other ships that I've been on have had. So for that reason, it was a little disappointing. It was $60 for the day pass, and it's probably our fault for not checking it out before we agreed to pay it. But that being said, we had a good time. It was a nice spa area, but I definitely wouldn't pay that again. So now let's end with a hit. And I have to say that we were so pleasantly surprised and happy with the wait staff in the main dining room. We ate in the Black Crab, that was the name of the dining room. And the staff there was absolutely incredible. They were so much fun. And we were on my time dining, so we had different servers every single night. But every time, they were so happy to see you. They were so excited that you were there. And one other thing that I loved, because we had the drink package, they never let my wine glass go empty. I didn't have to order another glass of wine. They just came by and taught me off constantly and it was really nice. One night we were there, they were singing and dancing and just seemed to be having a good time. It wasn't like one of the performances or anything. It seemed like a couple of the servers just decided to break out in song. It was really cute, it was really fun, and we definitely enjoyed our dinners there. 
So those were the major hits and the major hiccups with our sailing on the MSC Divina. As I mentioned, I will be doing a full cruise review next. So please subscribe if you don't want to miss that and give this video a thumbs up. If you've been on the MSC Divina, please leave a comment below and tell me what you liked and what you didn't like because I would love to read it. If you'd like to talk cruising with me a bit longer, I have picked out a couple videos at the end that I think you might like. And until next time, I hope you have happy and safe travels. Bye.